Across the nation, frontline workers have worked tirelessly to save the lives of those infected with COVID-19. In New York City alone, more than 20,000 people have died from coronavirus. A new CBS News documentary titled Bravery and Hope, Seven Days on the Front Lines, takes a look inside one of the major New York City hospitals during the height of the pandemic. Here's a preview. This is a gentleman that we were called about yesterday for some respiratory difficulty. We put him on higher amount of oxygen, and he did okay, but this morning he's uh, worse. Now they're going to get him ready for intubation. Every one of these intubations poses a risk to my doctors who are doing it. Bodily fluids from the lung, oftentimes are spewed into the air. Light and static. There are no small emergencies. They're all patients having respiratory distress or cardiac arrest. They have now attached him to the ventilator and they're trying to get his oxygen up and his blood pressure up. And oftentimes they're simultaneous. Another one? I need to go and assist. All right, make sure we get the intubation tray, please. Somebody down there, give me an intubation tray. We had just put the first patient uh, on a breathing machine and, and within a few minutes the team came and tells, tells us that, you know, there's another patient down the hall that's getting worse. We need another ET tube holder. There's none in the cart. It's here. We got it. This is a typical day during this pandemic. The ventilator is here now. During the entire pandemic, the stress level has been very high. As critical care physicians, we're used to taking care of the sickest patients in the hospital. But now we're taking care of a hospital that has been the sickest it has ever been. Guy Campanile, the executive producer of Bravery and Hope, seven days on the front line, joins me now. Guy, you know, New York City obviously is the nation's epicenter when it comes to COVID-19. Why did you decide to film this in the Bronx? Well, Rena, we took on this project for a bunch of reasons, uh, the largest of which is that, you know, we have seen snapshots of these front lines through reporting both in this country and from around the world. You know, CBS News has done a fair amount of reporting at hospitals around the country, but we felt it was really important to spend an extended period of time in one place to really get a deeper understanding of what was happening, not just in the hospital, but the community it serves. And the Bronx made the most sense. Um, as you point out, New York City uh, has suffered greatly in this crisis. Well, no place in New York has had a higher percentage of COVID cases, a higher per capita infection rate than the Bronx. And that's where we were for seven days. You know, you guys stayed at, at Bronx um, Montefiore Medical Center. You spent seven days there with your crew. What was it like at the peak of this pandemic? And what stood out to you as to what you were seeing and how these medical professionals were trying to deal with it? We saw in that clip, uh, the medical professional telling us there are no small emergencies, essentially. No, there are no small emergencies, and it, it happens minute by minute. And uh, first, we should dispel maybe a misunderstanding. The peak is not behind us. We're still at the peak. You know, there may be several Good dozen point. fewer cases than they've had in the past, but they're still dealing with their really acute crisis right now. Uh, and they understand that. And um, what you will witness in this hour, which is unlike anything else done so far on the COVID crisis, uh, is is just how it's nonstop. Uh, this is really an intimate view. It's a very moving view. Um, I think some people may even find it a little unsettling, but that's the purpose. We went there with the idea of being a fly on the wall. There's no narration. There's no reporting. This is just the voices of the medical staff and the patients we met in our seven days. And how powerful, because when you say it's just the voices, these voices say so much. It's not just, you know, how can I get a ventilator? Get a ventilator into this room. There's another patient coming in. You also get the perspective of what it's like for their home life. We did not want to make this about the kinetic energy you see in some reports from hospitals. I mean, yes, that's compelling and important, 
But what's equally important is the human drama that's occurring at the homes of these medical professionals, in the homes of the patients they care for, and the community these hospitals serve. You know, for many people, this crisis has been a little abstract. Not all of us have had to deal with a family member or a loved one who's gotten sick. Thank God for that. But we've all kind of been affected in some way through isolation or through the economic costs this has had. But what this hour does is remove those barriers and really brings you inside to the very front line in a long and extended way. Uh, it's something that's very unusual, and really the credit goes to the CBS News crew that did this, myself and three other video journalists uh, from different broadcasts around CBS News. I worked very closely with Mitch Weitzner as co-executive producer. Mitch had an extraordinary system set up to produce this broadcast, and it would have been impossible without the leadership of Susan Zerinsky, the president of CBS News, who believed in this project and backed us every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there are so many unsung heroes behind the camera that, that don't get the credit. You're right to Guy to point that out. I do want to ask you, though, you also rightly pointed out we are not past this epidemic at all. We're expecting a second wave. What do you hope when viewers watch this tonight that they walk away with? I think the hope really is to get, again, a deeper understanding of what this is like. Um, you know, there are many parts of this country, again, who've been very fortunate and they've been able to avoid uh, the kind of numbers that we've experienced here in the Northeast. It's, it's something you see on TV, but maybe you don't feel it. And I think what this hour does is it really taps you in a visceral way. I was surprised uh, by how even we felt watching it over and over and over. You're producing an hour documentary, you watch it dozens and dozens of times, you know the footage, but still we are moved by what we see. We're still nearly brought to tears by what we see because it's just so extraordinary. I and mean, this is happening in our country. This isn't a third world nation someplace suffering some calamity. This is here in the U.S. And to see it happening to your country, men and women, it's moving. It is such a fascinating perspective and I think a window into the crisis beyond what many of us think about on any given day. Guy Campanile, I want to thank you, Guy, very much for joining us. Look forward to tonight's presentation. Thanks, Rena. Stay healthy.